<laughs> okay, I'll try, to, I'll try to make myself clear. I'm, I'm just afraid I'm beating around the bush here with this. But, um, but I'm, I'm so curious about this because this has come up in interviews over the past five years. And it's very rare that we get a chance to interview someone like you who was raised in Japan and also got to see the, what was in the occupation during the war crime trials. Because everybody always asks me uh, when we talk about what I do in the war, they always ask about the war crime trials in Germany and in Japan because it was so different. Because in, the, in Germany, they're, to this day, they're still chasing Nazis down. And in Japan, it was all settled in the 40s. And there's no, um, you can't sue the Japanese government for past sins. And where in Germany to this day, there's still lawsuits where people want to be paid compensation for working in camps and things. Were they still doing that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they oh, still right. are. And uh, <clears throat> so, you know, the question comes up all the time about the difference. It comes up all the time, the difference. And so now here you are that was actually in on some of the war crime trials. It's so interesting to me to be able to ask these questions. But um, about the, the, uh, the temple... Um, I read that in 19, in 1974 that uh, the Class A war criminals who were executed, that their remains were not put into this temple, in the, the memorial. But in 1974, that their remains were placed in this memorial. And it was sort of um, quietly done because there is so much controversy about the memorial because the Koreans and the Chinese to this day have not forgotten what happened. And um, I was speaking to a man, not in the interviews, who, in fact, I was emailing him because he's Japanese. I was emailing him about trying to find an interview over there. And we were talking about the remains of, of the Tojo and the others being interred there. And he said that his point of view was that they were more martyrs than war criminals, that they should, that they should not have been executed. Is, do you think that's a common feeling? <clears throat> I think uh, uh, some people feel that way, some people in Japan, and some others, I don't know which is greater, uh, but the, some others don't feel that way. Uh, <clears throat> uh, I talked to uh, mm, uh, Japanese diplomats, uh, and uh, some of them uh, agree with me that uh, the war criminals, uh, General Tojo and the others, should not have been enshrined there uh, because <clears throat> uh, that uh, shrine, Yasukuni Shrine, was designated as a shrine uh, where the war dead, those who died in war, were enshrined. So, like my brother, is enshrined. Mm -hmm. The Tojo and others did not die in action. They did not die during the war. So they shouldn't be, they shouldn't be there. And a lot of Japanese agree with me. But I don't know who, who did that. <clears throat> uh, the, 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 uh, apparently it was okay with the government. Maybe ultra uh, uh, patriot. Is the, um, um, do, do you, you know, as far as their attitude, that a lot of them feel that they were, they were scapegoats that they that we needed to punish someone. Did so Tojo and them were punished for the war. In that, that the what I was reading besides the fact there that they were enshrined, this man's feeling was is that 
it wasn't like Hitler and it wasn't like the Nazis and the concentration camps is that Tojo and the rest of them should not have been executed for the for going to war. It, it, do you think that's true? Do you think there's any were were they found guilty and sentenced to death for political reasons or <clears throat> they found uh, why they found guilty? Yeah. <clears throat> uh, they found they were found guilty because they lost the war. Do you think that's it? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> because during the trial, it came out, uh, you know, like crime against humanity and things like that. But uh, <clears throat> I think this was a Japanese lawyer who pointed out there is, there is, um, Mm, no law against no no law such uh, governing a crime against humanity. Where is that? Where is that law? So if there is if there is no such law, there is no crime. Mm -hmm. And if there is no such law, there is no punishment. I think it's a nullum. Uh, Crimen uh, Zain uh, Liga or something, <laughs> some Latin word. <clears throat> but uh, if that is the case, uh, uh, it, it was hard for these technical people to find uh, the, the criminals, uh, war crime criminals. <clears throat> <clears throat> to be found guilty. <clears throat> but uh, so they're when, you, when you lose a war, <laughs> there isn't anything mm -hmm. you can do about it. Yeah. <laughs> so their crime was they lost the war. That was yeah, the, that, that. I think so. Did, um, that, is your brother in the shrine? Is your brother interred in the, in the war memorial there? Yeah, my, uh, my brother's name is there. I didn't see it, but <clears throat> My sister told me. Yeah. Have you been to that memorial, the shrine? No, no, I haven't been there. Uh, it's a, it is a big, it's, it's, it's a real important place, isn't it? I mean, it's. Well, uh, I guess so. Um, <clears throat> well, uh, I was in Japan. Uh, the uh, military constantly uh, pounded. Uh, into our head that uh, uh, it's a uh, <clears throat> privilege to be enshrined there and that uh, uh, nothing like uh, <clears throat> being enshrined uh, it's a it's a it's an honor for you and it's honor for your family and this and that, you know. <clears throat> mm. They used to pound that into our head when I was growing up in Japan. So when you're growing up in Japan, it was very military. Oh, yeah. very much so, very much yeah. so. And you were in you. It, the religion is Shinto. Is the is a national religion, isn't it? Is that what it's? Yeah. The religion there is a Shinto. Is that Shinto Buddhism? Uh, no, our family's uh, religion was Buddhism. Yeah, <clears throat> Shintoism <clears throat> is a state religion. Uh, some people uh, have uh, uh, Shinto as their family religion too, but uh, not too many. Mm. It's a, it's a separate thing. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, when uh, uh, young people get married, uh, they go before the Shinto shrine uh, for the ceremony. But when they di die, they go to Buddhist church. Mm. Uh, Is the um now, when you were growing up there and, and going to school, and also the the emperor uh, Hirohito was uh, he 
Hirohito's, he was a god, correct? Isn't that the way he was portrayed? Well, they, they said he was a descendant of God. That's what you were taught. Yeah, we uh, were told that. So was that um, your your education was regulated by the government, isn't it? The national government, <clears throat> and so you were raised up in the mold that they wanted you to be raised mm -hmm. in. So and you, uh, uh, Hirohito was he? Hirohito was very important in Japanese society, wasn't he? I mean. Yeah, he was. was. He, he was the <clears throat> center of uh, Japan, center of the Japanese people. And uh, he is a, a, a descendant uh, uh, from uh, Emperor Jimmo, way up there. <laughs> it's like over 2,000 years, right? Uh, something like yeah. that, yeah. But, uh, <clears throat> mm, well, when we were young, we we didn't have to really believe in it. Uh, we didn't have to. We said, well, okay, if that is, uh, if that is uh, what they tell us, okay, let it be like mm. that, you know. We weren't too serious about it. <laughs> yeah, because um, part of the peace treaty, too, was to change that, because then the Hirohito had to denounce his divinity, because didn't he come on the radio and, and speak to the Japanese nation and say he wasn't, son, he wasn't a descendant mm -hmm. of God? and because he he was a, he was a real important person in the national identity, right? Hirohito was. <clears throat> While I was uh, in Japan, early part of the occupation, I saw him going around, uh, mingled among people. He took his, his uh, ha hat off like that, and uh, people were very happy that uh, the man could come out and talk to him. Mm. Because uh, way before the war, uh, that wasn't possible. <laughs> well, they couldn't even look at him, could they? Yeah, you can look at him. When he was when he was traveling before the war, though, if he was going somewhere, you weren't supposed to look. No, uh, you were supposed to bow, mm. not even look at him. Mm. <laughs> were, now, were you? You weren't married at this time, were you? When you were in, in 1946, you were yeah. you, you were single. No, I I was uh, I was married. So was your, did your wife come to Japan or? Uh, in 1947. Hmm. Yeah. And were the the trials were they still going on in 1947? The war yeah. they were. Uh, <clears throat> trials, I I think started in 46. And uh, all of 46, seven, eight, and uh, nine. So three, four years it, it lasted. Did you, um, th did, was there any defendants that you successfully got, uh, got off of the charges that you saved? Yes, from <clears throat> we had um, a medical, uh, officer, he was a, a major general. Well, <clears throat> I think the prosecution wanted to uh, try him because he was a head of the, the medical s section or whatever, <clears throat> because some of the uh, men under him did bad things. But uh, <clears throat> we uh, were successful in getting him off the hook, you might say, he was found not guilty. And uh, after the trial was over, <clears throat> he brought his family to where we were living, <laughs> thanking us for, for the nice work. <laughs> so he, was in, he felt indebted to you for helping. Mm -hmm. Did you feel uh, um, when uh, this other, the, the, the man was, um, found guilty of of executing the airman did you feel did you feel responsible for having failed him and not being able to defend him did i did i <clears throat> feel i failed yeah no 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 we did, we did the best we could there but there was no way to to save him anyway was there no uh, no 
because he admitted he killed. Yeah. Yeah. Did they, um, uh, you know, I think he's talking about the, the way things happen. You know, it, a lot of people that were POWs and veterans over there, they, they viewed things as being so cruel. But like one veteran said that um, he was in a POW camp in Japan and how badly he was beaten. And people were beaten to death. But he said, you know, they treated their they treated their own soldiers just as badly as they treated us. That he he's forgiving because he's he says you know he doesn't think it was out of malice. That he was he thinks that that's just was the way that it was. That that's how that they he doesn't think that, uh, that he he doesn't think this treatment was completely. Uh, uh, mean spirit he thinks that that's just the way it was and they saw no, there, there was nothing in their view there was nothing wrong with this treatment of, of POWs well <clears throat> I think the uh, I don't know about the Navy but the, the entire Japanese army uh, was so disciplined and so tough uh, that uh, that was natural <clears throat> you know before before I came back to Seattle in 1934, uh, uh, in my uh, senior year in high school, we had to go and live with uh, soldiers for a couple of weeks. And uh, <clears throat> we had uh, maneuver and uh, during the maneuver, of course, uh, <clears throat> we fired the uh, rifle. But <clears throat> we were told to pick up all the, <clears throat> uh, the casings, you know, small casings. Mm -hmm. Well, <clears throat> some of us couldn't find all the casings. Like uh, we, we expended maybe five we couldn't find five, and the uh, soldiers got mad. <laughs> but they, <clears throat> they, they, they was almost, that almost uh, beat our boys, hmm. almost. And uh, if uh, he were, the uh, soldier said, if uh, this happened to another soldier in the active duty, he would be really, uh, you know, physically uh, treated, uh, you know. But uh, <clears throat> because you guys are uh, students, uh, you get away this time, but you gotta find, find them. Mm. And uh, <clears throat> well, I guess uh, in, the, in the American army that wouldn't have happened, you know, if uh, a little casing like got lost, which is, well, it's a loss. But over there, the, the country was poor, and they didn't want to lose all that. So a lot of what, what, what in our eyes, things that were viewed as um, things that were viewed as criminal acts, really, in 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 a Japanese military man's eyes, was just <clears> that's <throat> just the way it is. That the yeah. word we treat offenses differently because <laughs> they didn't see anything in. Um, uh, I've heard that. Of course, I hear this through American veterans, but you know that uh, being a POW, that you sort of you were a different status too. I mean, that you were a, because you had surrendered and were captured, that that you had a different sort of level that you were at at that point. Is that true? Yeah, <clears throat> uh, they they were ashamed to be uh, captured as a POW, and uh, they always said that's a real shame. So rather than being captured, uh, they wanted to commit suicide. Uh, so that <clears throat> with that kind of mentality, uh, you don't know what they do. Yeah. Mm. So uh, when uh, they uh, captured uh, enemy POW, uh, they they figured uh, 
that they were lower class. Yeah. <laughs> and it's a real class, isn't it? Japan's or I mean, this is a class-based society in the United States, but in Japan, wasn't there's very rigid classes, isn't there? Because there's there's uh, emperor and princes, and there's samurai, and there's business, and isn't there different levels of who you are? Four. There's four levels. <clears throat> what are they? The samurai, uh, farmer, uh, artisan, and business. That <clears throat> that was uh, that was the way it was uh, until about uh, middle of last century, but uh, after that, that's all uh, abandoned. So, is it a, a middle of of, 19, of the nineteen hundreds or middle of the eighteen hundreds? Middle of eighteen hundred. Oh, so it's abandoned, but is there still <clears throat> a holdover about class and society? Because in in the World War II, um, a, a descendant of a samurai did they still were they still somewhere in the no <clears throat> um, <clears throat> after um, <clears throat> uh, Commodore Perry went and opened up Japan and they had a big uh, <clears throat> turmoil but uh, eventually they opened up the country. And uh, they started to import uh, uh, industrial technique, uh, different system, medical system, and whatnot. <clears throat> and these things were gradually forgotten. But uh, by uh, a government uh, decree, uh, but uh, it took a long, long time. And uh, <clears throat> Uh, uh, people still know there is there was there was such a caste system. It doesn't apply for at least a hundred years or more, but still they talk about it, mm -hmm. and uh, still they say, "Well, uh, my ancestor from uh, a samurai class." So other people say, so what? You know, but <clears throat> they still, still they are proud of it. But uh, <clears throat> did um, uh, what did what did you think about the use of the atomic bomb? Did you think that was good or bad or atomic bomb? Yeah, do you think we should have used it or? <clears throat> Do I think uh, it was a good, good thing or <laughs> bad thing? Yeah. <clears throat> well, <clears throat> I read a uh, number of books. I heard from <clears throat> different people, uh, different Japanese people saying, Japan was about to give up anyway. And uh, <clears throat> even if atomic bomb did not fall, by the end of that year, that's a 1945, Japan would have given up. If that is the case, <clears throat> they didn't have to use a bomb. But nobody knew. No, nobody in this, in this country knew about that. And uh, even if somebody told uh, our president, uh, maybe they wouldn't have believed it. Uh, how, how that would have been resolved and uh, peace uh, uh, came about, nobody knows because it didn't happen. <clears throat> but I heard, uh, and I read saying that uh, they didn't have all kinds of things. They didn't have ammunition. The food was running out. <clears throat> Morale was low. And uh, they, uh, the country <clears throat> would have uh, uh, 
come to some kind of term by the end of that year. We don't know. But <clears throat> I think it was dropped on the assumption that Japan will continue to fight. We don't know that. Yeah. It's, it's a <clears throat> difficult uh, <clears throat> thing to talk about, but <clears throat> I was wondering why didn't they give warning to, to the people of Hiroshima saying we're going to drop something terrible by a certain day and that uh, you people all should leave. I think they should have, could have given a warning. Then uh, all the civilians won't get, wouldn't have been hurt. Yeah. I think, I think uh, there were quarter of a million people. Yeah. Did you go to either Hiroshima or Nagasaki to look? Huh? Did you go to either Hiroshima or Nagasaki when I you I went to both cities. Uh, <clears throat> well, <clears throat> from Tokyo, I went down to see my folks. So when the train stopped at the Hiroshima station, I got off the train to look at it. It was all flat. And uh, I was taking pictures and uh, <clears throat> the conductor said, you better come back to uh, the train. The train is about to leave. <laughs> I took more pictures and I think I delayed the train by one minute. <clears throat> but uh, uh, it was all flat. Yeah, it was terrible. So it was different than Tokyo? Where's S same flatness. There's nothing. No, but no chimneys sticking up or anything. Uh, in Hiroshima, I didn't see so many chimneys. Uh, not too many factories going was uh, th were there, I guess, uh, from the station that is. Uh, not as many <coughs> uh, concrete chimneys as the Awata steel mill area or between Tokyo and Yokohama, nothing but chimneys. But uh, in Hiroshima, I didn't see so many chimneys, but as I recall, we were just plain flat. Nothing was there. <laughs> the Nagasaki the same, or? Uh, <clears throat> Nagasaki, I <clears throat> didn't go to Nagasaki until uh, about uh, six, seven years ago. It's uh, out of way, you know, way out there. <clears throat> but the Hiroshima, uh, I saw uh, in 1946. Uh, I didn't go to Nagasaki, yeah. Were there people in, 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 when you got that train station in Hiroshima, were there people there? Waiting to get on the train and get off the train? Yeah, people getting on, getting off yeah. the tr uh, train, yes. But just nothing but no city? Well, uh, I don't know where they would have gone, but uh, uh, there were people getting off, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> those days, uh, the Japanese trains uh, had um, passenger cars marked with a white line about that wide for Allied forces. And uh, uh, so <clears throat> trains had these cars and only the uh, occupation people could get in there. But the cars without the line the uh, Japanese got on, and uh, uh, there were cars without the line, so they were getting off and getting on. Yeah, not too many, but still, there were some passengers. Did the um, um, were you now in Yokohama? Was it, it was bombed also pretty badly? Was it or Yokohama?
Not too bad. So when you were there, there were buildings and places to live and... Yokohama. Is that, <coughs> is that where you lived over there, is Yokohama? Yes, uh, while I was working for the uh, trials, uh, we lived in Yokohama. Uh, but uh, I didn't see... Uh, as much uh, destruction as Tokyo area. Yeah. There, were, there were some destruction, though, yeah. <clears throat> but, but not, not as much. When you were over in Japan, when you first were there and you were still with the U.S. military, did you ever run into any Japanese that were, that, did they have, an, any, anybody have animosity towards you for, did they view you as a Japanese that were sort of a traitor or did, or did in, did you ever get any of that? That people viewed you toward us, towards you, because you were <clears throat> a Japanese in American uniform. No, <clears throat> uh, they. Uh, uh, if anything, they respected us. Uh, you know, I went there almost a year after the war was over. Uh, I went there in September of '46. The war was over uh, August uh, the previous year, so maybe they were used to by by then. Uh, I didn't uh, come across anybody uh, who uh, said to us <coughs> that uh, they didn't like or they hated us or anything like that. Uh, of course, uh, we couldn't uh, read their mind, but uh, most of us, most of them showed respect, yeah, especially us, because we could talk the language. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did the, uh, the, do you think that the, the occupation forces, that they, that they did things properly when they were there, do you think that the, MacArthur and the, the, the right decisions were made about Japan and how to reshape it? <clears throat> I think he, he was the right man. He was. He was, um, he was an actor, you know. <laughs> he, uh, he was quite an actor. So, uh, <clears throat> and uh, the people liked him. Yeah, so uh, I believe he did a good job. As obviously, some people didn't like him, but <clears throat> by and large, I think uh, people appreciated him, and uh, so many of them. Now, of course, I left Japan before he did, but uh, so many of them were sad when he had to leave Japan to come back here. So the Japanese themselves liked MacArthur. Mm -hmm. Mr. Doy said that MacArthur was the picture of a conqueror. That that was one of his strengths was that he was what they expected a conqueror to be. Is that true? Well, I guess so. He <clears throat> he was fair. He had that charisma. <laughs> I think he was the right man. Did you ever meet him, MacArthur? Well, I didn't talk to him or anything, but uh, <clears throat> he would uh, uh, come down to his office. Uh, there's an imperial palace here and the moat here, the water. <clears throat> and then there is a street and there is a Daiichi building, insurance company building. That's his office was, where his office was and he would come in there uh, Oh, Cadillac, and uh, eh, about 10 or 10.30 in the morning, and lots of people were out there, you know, waiting for him to get out. <clears throat> he get off the car and walk in. <clears throat> so his office? I think, I think uh, he, he uh, didn't smile, but uh, I think 
He was the right man. His office was right by the Imperial Palace, was it? Yes. Just right across the street? Yeah. Well, we <clears throat> had the Imperial Palace, mm -hmm. and the all around is a moat, and there's a broad street, and then uh, there were <clears throat> buildings here, and the, his office mm -hmm. was right there. Did, uh, now, did the occupation forces respect the emperor's, the, the palace, did they leave it to him? Was there, did, or did, did, did they show the emperor respect and leave the palace intact and not use any of the palace for military uses or? Occupation people or? The U.S. forces, did, did they, was the emperor's palace, was, did they respect the emperor and his? Well, I don't know whether the occupation people respected the emperor or not. But I mean, did they uh, not respect him, but did, the, like MacArthur didn't tell the emperor that he wanted his palace for an office or anything. I mean, they, they, they left the emperor intact. I mean, they didn't take away his palace. They didn't put him in jail. They didn't, when the war ended, the emperor stayed living in the palace, right? So MacArthur was in his office here and Emperor Hirohito was over here. But they didn't, and the Hirohito was not punished at the end of the war, correct? No. <clears throat> I think, uh, uh, you know, a lot of books uh, say that uh, MacArthur didn't want to do anything to, uh, <clears throat> uh, from all studies, uh, he figured if you leave the emperor alone and uh, if, uh, uh, the, also, if you leave the Japanese government alone, uh, he could do a better job than uh, he running a, everything. So it was uh, mainly MacArthur's uh, uh, decision not to depose uh, emperor. Yeah, Mr. Doi thought that there would be a power vacuum if the emperor was deposed, that all of a sudden there would be an opening for other elements to move into the government. Mm -hmm. Could be. Uh, was there enough, um, the, the Japanese people themselves, w would they have accepted it if, if the emperor had been deposed, do you think? <clears throat> I think the Japanese uh, people uh, were happy that the emperor was left alone. Uh, <clears throat> they still believed that uh, he was the almighty and that uh, <clears throat> uh, I think it worked better. Uh, that uh, the way that MacArthur ran, uh, <clears throat> take him away, uh, mm, uh, try him and find him guilty and all that. I don't know what would have happened. They, they, there's no way they would ever have executed the emperor of Japan. Uh, right? You never know. Oh, <clears throat> you know he. Although the Japanese so-called constitution said. He wasn't responsible for anything. Uh, without his consent, the war couldn't have started. Mm. And, and he stopped the war. He did? Yeah. He told the people to lay down arms. Mm. So, so the... Uh, all the commanders said, well, if that's the emperor's wish, we're, we're going to lay down. Hmm. I know uh, one woman we interviewed, Mrs. Sakurai, who's 96, and she lived in Tokyo during the war. I asked her about the day the emperor came on the radio to denounce his divinity. And, and I said, well, do you remember that? She says, yes, I cried. Hmm. It was it was a hard thing for most Japanese, I would think, for the emperor to. Uh, I should think so. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> <clears throat>
to this day does the the imperial family in Japan. It's it's different today, isn't it? The, their role in J Japanese society mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because you pretty much when the occupation Japanese it, government was completely redone we gave them a constitution and we changed the whole way things work right uh, do you feel um, on the cases how many cases did you actually work on in Difference. Well, <clears throat> I don't, <clears throat> I don't uh, uh, recall how many, but I think uh, one case on the average lasted uh, two or three months. Really? So we had uh, uh, trials. Uh, uh, I went there in '47, and it was already going on. So. Uh, uh, I went there all of 47, 8, 9. I worked there for about three years. And three years, uh, that's a 36 months. Oh, I must have, <clears throat> have been involved in at least a dozen cases. Yeah, at least. In a lot of those cases, do, do you feel I mean, is that really a lot of it is that they they lost the war and that's why they're being tried? I mean, is that a majority of the cases or do you think? Like you said, the the, uh, the general who was in the medical field and the guard in the, that executed the airmen and do, do you think if they, you would not, there would not have been those trials if the war had gone the other way, none of them. That's what I'm saying. Uh, <clears throat> I, <clears throat> I, uh, I think because Japan accepted the uh, uh, unconditional surrender, uh, there were more trials. That there were more trials. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah. And <clears throat> also, uh, uh, I guess you heard about purge. Uh, <clears throat> uh, before the war, the big business uh, or the corporations cooperated with the uh, army uh, or armed forces and uh, they benefited. And so <clears throat> uh, I think the way I heard, everybody who held an important position like a board of directors and uh, a certain rank and above were purged. They couldn't, oh, yeah. they couldn't go back to that company. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I, I knew one person <clears throat> who uh, uh, I got acquainted with uh, Mitsubishi, and I worked for Mitsubishi here in Seattle branch after the war. But uh, during the war, there was uh, one man in Mitsubishi's, uh, one of the Mitsubishi offices, and uh, uh, that <clears throat> branch manager there said, that man is, has been purged. So he cannot take an active part, but mm -hmm. he's an advisor, and he was getting paid. <laughs> <laughs> Change his title, huh? <laughs> uh, uh, interesting. <laughs> yeah. The um, uh, I guess it's all I have to ask, unless Carl has more. Yeah, you know, because that's been the biggest question is about the difference. Because everybody asks that about, well, how come? Because today, even the day you read about it all the time, that there's one group that wants to sue the Japanese government because they were because they were used as laborers in the industry during the war. The Chinese, of course, always have a big problem because of the occupation of China, and so we get asked it all the time. Well, how come this is the way this worked and this is the way it worked in Germany? So I'm glad that had had the chance to ask you, someone that was there. 
about how the peace was settled. So, so what's our question? Well, that was what the questions we asked earlier. That's why Matt been asked these questions. It was just about, you know, everybody always asks, well, how come the war crime trials went the way they did? It, I always get asked about the war crime trials, and it's been so nice to actually speak to someone that was at the trials. Because most people ask, well, how come, how come they went this way in Germany and how come they went this way in Japan? I always get asked that. But I think well, would... <clears throat> uh, there were. I uh, I'm not sure, but uh, <clears throat> one thing different uh, uh, between uh, trials in Japan and the trials in uh, Germany was that is a persecution of Jewish people. Yeah. I think that it played a lot of uh, difference. And then <clears throat> uh, there were certain Jewish people in this country uh, who wanted to go over there and take revenge. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was no s such person in case of Japan. Did, um, when you were over there, all the Japanese military that you spoke to, did, you know, our view of Pearl Harbor is that it was a real treacherous act. It was a surprise. But um, when you read about it, <coughs> for weeks there were negotiations between Japan and the United States because we were, we had told Japan we we're going to cut off oil supplies to them. Isn't that what happened? Before the war? That, uh, I read an account from one man that they said that you know it was understood that we were doing what we were doing because they felt that the United States had taken aggressive action by cutting off oil and steel to Japan. So I guess what I'm asking is to the Japanese veteran that you spoke to when you're over there, they felt that they were doing what they were the right thing for their country. Is that was that their feeling? <clears throat> uh, the question is whether they thought that, that they did the right thing. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, some people thought so. Some people believed so, uh, because um, <clears throat> well, Japan was um, busy uh, fighting in China. And uh, the Chinese appealed, and uh, a country like the United States said uh, Japan was wrong, and she was wrong. Uh, like a Manchurian incident, uh, it really, the Chinese didn't start that. Mm -hmm. The Japanese uh, destroyed the railroad and said that the Chinese did that, and that sort of thing. <clears throat> anyway. <clears throat> The uh, Allied uh, uh, forces or uh, allies uh, told Japan to get out of China, and uh, Japan won't get out. <coughs> and uh, so I said, "Well, then uh, we are going to uh, censor. We are going to uh, we are not going to sell you oil. We are not going to sell you steel. Uh, we are going to." Uh, do all these embargoes. Well, <clears throat> they didn't have uh, big oil tanks in Japan those days. And uh, <clears throat> the Navy, the Japanese Navy, started to say, well, uh, uh, we're, we're going to run out of oil. Uh, then we'll be dead duck. And uh, so we're going to have to do something. Uh, well, there is uh, oil down there, Southwest Pacific. Uh, you can go and get them. <clears throat> and, uh, but uh, that means war. And anyway, <clears throat> and all these things piled up. Not the Army, but the Navy felt that uh, the Navy couldn't function. And without the Navy, it couldn't function. Uh, Japan's armed forces, uh, half of Japan's armed forces couldn't function. So 
they had to do something, <coughs> and uh, uh, then the army uh, said, well, uh, we should uh, go down and get the oil from Dutch East Indies. <coughs> okay, now if we do that, uh, Americans and allies will come after us. Well, uh, <coughs> if they're going to come after us, we better go get them pushed. So that's why they say it was a self-defense. Well, could be, you know, <coughs> could be. <coughs> and uh, I guess you saw in the movie too, but uh, I, I hear it was true that uh, the prime minister, just before the Pearl Harbor, Prime Minister asked uh, <coughs> uh, Admiral Yamamoto, what do you think of uh, the war? <coughs> you think we're going to win? And Yamamoto said, no. <coughs> I can mm, I can uh, <coughs> have uh, <coughs> early victory, <clears throat> but I cannot guarantee after one year. I think he was thinking of oil, without oil. Like, <clears throat> so in the end, oil was the one that <laughs> defeated Japan. In the very, very end, <clears throat> the big uh, what was that, a 50 or 60 ton uh, battleship, Yamato, <coughs> never engaged in war, it was uh, near Japan and uh, for the final defense. And there were <coughs> army, mainly army generals who said, you, the Navy, <coughs> you got <coughs> battleship <clears throat> Never fire a shot. Go do something. That was uh, when the last battle in Okinawa was taking place. But the Navy was reluctant to send that battleship. But <clears throat> because the Army uh, group said so much, finally they decided to send uh, Yamato, the, the big battleship. When <clears throat> Yamato went down to the Philippine Islands, they had enough oil for one way only. They couldn't come back. They knew that. So they held back the battleship in Japan. But because of uh, the constant harassment by the army, the navy reluctantly sent that battleship with the 2,000 sailors knowing they would, they would never come back. Mm. See, so <clears throat> then uh, because the Navy uh, was going to be a dead duck without oil, they said it was a self-defense. I don't know whether it's self-defense or not. In a way, <laughs> I think in a way, Mr. Bush is saying it's a self-defense. <laughs> We are going to go, <laughs> go mm -hmm. attack uh, Iraq. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I shouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of people think that's it. <laughs> well, it's been real interesting. Yeah. I'm glad to get your, hear your story. Yeah. I want to thank you so much for coming down today. Oh, uh, it was very interesting talking to you. Yeah, Mr. Doy was right. Mr. Doy